Welcome to Real Recaps. Today, we'll look at a horror and sci-fi film called Annihilation. Lena, a biologist and an army veteran, mysteriously survives a covert operation that left some of her colleagues dead. Upon her return, she is brought to a government facility and interrogated by a man wearing a hazmat suit. Lomax, the man questioning Lena, wonders how she survived for two months when she only had food rations for two weeks. Lena says she doesn't remember eating at all during the mission. She tries to recall more details of the expedition as Lomax continues to probe for more answers. Some years before the mission, a glowing asteroid entered the Earth's atmosphere and landed in a lighthouse on the southern coast of the US as soon as it hit the ground, it started emitting a glowing smoke that expanded steadily. Before the covert mission, Lena had been working as a biology professor at the Johns Hopkins University. During a class, she teaches her students how a single cell continually splits and replicates itself until it forms every living thing on Earth. After the class, a male colleague named Daniel invites her to a party for the weekend. She turns him down with an excuse. Daniel reminds her that it has been a year since she lost her husband Kane, and tells her that it wouldn't be wrong for her to enjoy some time with friends. At home, Lena reminisces the pleasant time she spent with Kane while she prepares to paint the bedroom. Kane, a green beret, had been missing since he went away on a secret mission. As Lena starts to paint, a man enters the house and slowly makes his way up to the bedroom. As he reaches the door, Lena sees him and realizes that Kane has finally come home. She runs over to him and cries as she hugs him. Later on, Lena starts asking Kane about his last mission, but he says he's unsure where it was. Lena continues to press him for answers, but he keeps saying he doesn't know. When she asks how he got home, Kane just implied that he found himself outside their room. Before Lena could ask him any more questions, he tells her that he's starting to feel sick. Kane is loaded into an ambulance, but government agents intercept them on the way to the hospital. Lena struggles as the operatives drag her away, so they sedate her while others take Kane out of the ambulance. When Lena wakes up, she finds herself in a government facility known as Area X. A psychologist named Dr. Ventress enters her room and asks her what she knows about Kane's mission. Ventress, who works for an organization called the Southern Reach, informs her that Kane is also at the facility, but he is severely ill. Lena surmises that the illness might be caused by radiation or a virus and offers to help Ventress find out what's wrong with her husband. Ventress shows Lena the mysterious glowing zone they call the Shimmer and explains that none of the people who have ventured into the area have returned. So far, the Shimmer has only affected sparsely populated swamplands, but the doctor fears that it will keep expanding until it swallows up whole cities and even states. Kane is the only one who managed to get out of the Shimmer, but he is slowly dying due to multiple organ failures. Ventress hints to Lena that she might not be allowed to go home because of what she knows about their covert operations. Lena tells the psychologist that she wants to stay with her husband. Later that night, a team of scientists introduce themselves to Lena and informs her that they're all scheduled to go into the Shimmer in a few days with Ventress. All previous expeditions had been military personnel, but this time, the team will comprise four female scientists. Lena asks the women what they think happened with the previous expeditions. Anya, a paramedic from Chicago, suggests that the people who went inside the zone were probably killed by something, or they went crazy and killed each other. Cass Shepard, a geomorphologist, mentions that one military personnel was able to return from the zone. Lena falls silent and doesn't let them know that the man who made it out was her husband. The next day, Lena meets up with Ventress and lets her know that she wants to join her team. She tells the doctor that she refrained from telling the other members about her husband because it might complicate things. The five women soon enter into the shimmer, but they wake up to find themselves in a camp without any recollection of what they did after they went in. They deduce from their remaining food supplies that they've been inside for at least three days. Josie Roddick, a physicist, notifies her teammates that all their communications equipment cannot send any signals out of the shimmer. However other devices, such as the camera, are working fine. She checks the compass and finds out that it is also malfunctioning. They decide to head south until they reach the coast, using only the sun and their watches to point them in the right direction. Along the way, they come across a hut covered with various flowers that seem to be of different species. Lena, however, notices that they're all growing from the same branch. She concludes that all those flowers are from the same plant, and it has constantly been mutating. All of a sudden, something grabs Roddick and tries to pull her underwater. They pull Roddick to safety and look around for the creature that attacked her. A giant alligator soon emerges from the water and starts crawling toward them. As it gets close to Thornson, Lena shoots it continuously until it stops crawling. When the reptile dies, Lena inspects its teeth and discovers that it has mutated. Lena tells Lomax that they saw other mutated animals on their way to the coast back in the interrogation room. 
Lomax suggests that they could be hallucinations, but Lena insisted that they all saw the same things during the expedition. With the boats they found near the hut, the team makes their way out of the swamp. Lena and Shepard ride together and talk about their past as they row. Lena reveals that she served in the army for seven years and met her husband there. However, as Shepard asks more questions, Lena lies and tells her that her husband was killed in action. Shepard asserts that all of them decided to go on the expedition because they're dealing with some problem in their lives. Anya is recovering from an addiction, while Josie had probably tried to take her own life, as indicated by the scars on her forearm. No one seems to know much about Ventress, but she doesn't appear to have any family or friends. Shepard reveals that she has lost her daughter to leukemia, and she's never been the same since. The group arrives in Fort Amaya, which served as the headquarters of the Southern Reach before it became part of the Shimmer. Lena sees more mutated organisms on the walls, noting that they appear to be malignant. Inside the building, they notice that the previous expedition has used the place as a base. As the team continues to investigate, they find a memory card and insert it into Roddick's camera. In the video, Kane cuts the stomach of his teammate open to reveal a worm-like organism moving around his stomach. Thorinson concludes that members of the previous expedition went crazy and killed each other, but Roddick thinks there was a creature inside the man's stomach. In another part of the building, they see a corpse merged with a growing colony of fungi. Roddick says she doesn't want to stay at the base any longer, but Ventress argues that they have no choice because it's getting dark outside. That night, Lena recalls how her husband departed abruptly for the covert operations, abandoning their plans to spend time together in the countryside. Unable to fall asleep, she checks the cell samples she gathered earlier and sees them splitting rapidly. She then goes to the outpost, where Ventress is keeping watch so that she could replace her. After going over their plans for the next day, Lena asks the psychologist why her husband volunteered for the mission. Ventress suggests that he must have joined because of his self-destructive instinct, which she believes is coded into the human genes. The two women are suddenly startled by a loud noise coming from the outside. Shepard, who was also awakened by the sound, comes over to investigate. While they look around the fort, a large animal approaches Shepard from behind and grabs her. With Shepard gone, Roddick and Thornson insist on heading back to the facility. Ventress, however, is determined to continue the journey to the lighthouse and find out what's causing the shimmer. Lena hints that she also wants to go back, but she argues that they can get out of the shimmer by following the coast until they reach the perimeter wall. She points out that it had taken them six days to get to the fort, but it will only take two more days to reach the coast. In the interrogation room, Lomax accuses Lena of lying to her teammates because she wanted to continue the journey to the lighthouse. He contends that Lena didn't know whether it would be safe to move forward, but she made the decision as if she did. Lena argues that it was Ventress who made the decision. Lomax, however, points out that Ventress is sick with cancer and had no intention of coming back. As they head to the coast, they find Shepard's shoe on the ground and decide to look for her. Lena goes deep into the woods and comes across two deer that appear to be moving in unison. As she continues the search, she sees Shepard's mangled body under a tree. The team decides to stay at an abandoned house as the sky starts to set. Out in the yard, they find plants that are shaped like human beings. Roddick starts conveying her theory that the signals inside the shimmer aren't blocked but scrambled. She suggests that the shimmer is not just refracting light and radio signals but DNA as well. That night Lena recalls her affair with Daniel when her husband was away. Lena fears that her husband already knows about their illicit relationship and tells Daniel that it won't ever happen again. As the team slept, Thorinson discovers the picture of Kane in Lena's necklace and attacks her. Lena wakes up to find herself and her two other teammates tied up to a chair. Realizing that Lena had been lying to the team, Thorinson starts to doubt whether an animal killed Shepard. She recounts her theory that members of the previous mission were either killed by something or went crazy and killed themselves. She noted that she had seen her fingerprints moving earlier, suggesting that she might be going mad. As she threatens to cut Lena with a knife, they hear Shepard's voice outside the house. Thorinson runs outside as she hears Shepard repeatedly yelling for help. The next thing the team hears is the roar of a bear. The mutated bear finds its way into the room and walks toward the women, who are still tied up. As the bear gets close, it starts imitating Shepard's voice. Wounded from the bear's attack, Thorinson gets back in the house and tries to kill the bear, but the animal tears her apart. Roddick breaks free from her chair and shoots the bear dead while it attacks Lena. Ventress fears that she wouldn't make it to the lighthouse if they wait any longer, so she decides to go there independently. Lena finds Roddick out in the yard and tells her that she found mutations in her blood. Roddick concludes that the mutations will soon be inside everyone. She checks the roots and leaves that are starting to grow in her arm and starts walking away from Lena. Lena tries to run after her, but Roddick disappears when she reaches the garden with human-shaped plants. 
Now on her own, Lena finally reaches the coast and sees numerous crystal trees growing outside the lighthouse. Inside the building, she sees a charred skeleton sitting in front of a camera. When she played back the video, she sees Kane sitting down, telling a person behind the camera that he is starting to doubt his own identity. Fearing that he might be losing his mind, Kane prepares to detonate a phosphorus grenade. Kane tells the mysterious person to find Lena then pulls the pin from the explosive. As he burns to death, a man behind the camera walks toward Kane. When the man turns around, Lena sees that he looks identical to her husband. After turning off the camera, Lena starts hearing voices coming from a hole in the ground. She follows the voice and sees Ventress, who appears to be mutating. The psychologist says that the mutation is already inside her, and it will continue to expand until it swallows up everything. She warns that their bodies will be broken up into small parts until they're all annihilated. Ventress then raises her head, and light bursts out of her mouth until her body completely disintegrates. Lena stands by and watches as the light that came out of Ventress transforms into different shapes. Moments later, the unknown life form absorbs blood from a cut on Lena's face and starts morphing into a humanoid. Lena shoots the figure and tries to escape from it, but she sees the entity, which starts to mimic her every move when she gets out of the hole. When she tries attacking it, the entity fights back. She runs to the door, hoping to get out of the lighthouse, but the creature holds onto her until she gives up. With the entity still imitating her movements, Lena finds another phosphorus grenade on the ground. After pulling out the pin, she hands it over to the humanoid, which has started to copy her appearance. Lena leaves the lighthouse as the entity burns and lights up other mutated organisms around it. The shimmer starts to disappear when the humanoid spreads the fire inside the hole. Back at the facility, Lomax asks Lena if she found out what the entity wanted. Lena says that she doesn't know, but she asserts that it is not trying to destroy anything. It was only mutating everything that it finds to make something new. Lomax informs her that everything at the lighthouse has been burned to cinders. After the shimmer disappeared, Kane's condition stabilized and returned to normal. Lena pays a visit to her husband and asks him whether he's Kane. He says, I don't think so, and proceeds to ask her if she's Lena. She hugs him and doesn't answer. As they continue to embrace, both of their eyes start to change colors and glow. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.